Buy granite. Correct granite, yo. I, I think the food is ready. Mm -hmm. This food will serve everybody. Mm -hmm. Operational progress. You chop alone, die alone. But don't, so, don't you think that this maturity may also have something to do with the um, the um, achievement of our leaders? Because um, followers don't believe uh, anything. Most followers don't believe what the government is saying anymore because the government has failed them over the years. Exactly. So there's no trust anymore. Exactly. So when, yeah. when um, even if the government is from one side and is delivering to the people, mm. I don't think they will complain. But uh, No, the people will complain. Believe me, even if we have a president mm. and then the president is doing so well, Okay, and the people believe that, and I, I, I don't want to be controversial by calling names. We had presidents that have done well, you know, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. we, we did. You know, probably some of them I disagreed with, but they have done well, okay? So, and we have presidents that we know they didn't do well. There is no two way about that, okay? And, and uh, you can tell if somebody is like this, uh, uh, Professor Muyumba, what he's saying, he said, if somebody spends over an hour just telling you, I have done this, I have done this, he said he has done nothing. So, so the best thing is that the, what he has done, like uh, my predecessor, you know, believes, seeing is believing, you will see it on your own. Mm. You know, you can only talk about this, but you will see it on your own. You know, and this is the truth. So we have, we have known some people who didn't do well, and we have seen some people who have done well. So, but the bottom line is what you said. Our leaders... You know, and I can't take myself out because I'm now a governor also. You know, our leaders in the past and in the, the present have to change that scenario. Mm -hmm. Our leaders have so far, you know, abused the opportunities and created this distrust. You know, so it will take leaders now to be able to get out of that hole. We have to do things that will make people to trust us. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we don't, the distress will just is just continue. going to continue. And, continue. and as long as the distress is there, it doesn't matter how well a leader does, people will prefer their own. You know, it's not that their own is going to do any better, <laughs> but their own letting also come and continue with the distress. At least it's our own. You know, and I think that's that's just the <laughs> the bottom line. Okay, sir. So, um, talking about leadership. Uh, Nasrallah State is blessed with a lot of mineral resources, you know, but these mineral resources are being mined by uh, artisanal miners, you know. Is there anything you are doing to, like, enhance the production of these mineral resources? Um, we are encouraging the real investors in mining to come in rather than this artist. You know, if you follow these um, illeg illegal miners who are just uh, uh, doing it in a very crude manner, they are not professional miners or so, at the end of the day, you don't even get anything out of it. You know, because most of these uh, minerals that we are talking about, they are, you find them very, very deep. You know, the ones that our miners are able to do are the ones just on the surface. You know, the moment they begin to go down, anywhere 15, 20 meters down, they abandon the mine because it becomes very dangerous for them. Mm. You require professionality to do that. So what we are doing in, in uh, Nasrallah State is encouraging professional miners to come, you know, and join us. And a good example is gold mining. You know, any gold you see on the surface also, <laughs> is, uh, uh, go the gold is there. 
what you are seeing here is just peanut. Just the real gold is is uh, is down there. So, and it is the same thing, you know, something with uh, coal that we do, something with zinc, something with lead, you know, tantalite, columbite, this and that. We have all of them in here, but it's going to take us a while. You know, we keep going down, down before we can find them. So we have to get some. So luckily for us, you know, we have been able to establish three major companies now in the state. You know, one is actually uh, uh, mining. In fact, they are the only company that are quoted at the Nigerian Stock Exchange at the moment. Okay, so uh, Multivite. Um, right now, they are in the process of investing about a hundred million dollars. Wow. You know, yeah, to go ahead and, and, and mine lead, zinc, and columbite. I do know that they are talking to some banks. Let me not expose all their things. They are talking to some banks about raising additional funds, you know, in order to invest mm. in that area. Mm. So that is one of the companies. The next company is actually a Chinese company, you know, called Kenyang. They are, they are sitting also, we just finished constructing the major road in that area. And they are also working around Udege site. You know, this one, the, the first one I mentioned is around Awe. This one is around Udege. We are talking to them. You know, we are working also in their own uh, area to see the possibility of what and what they will be able to do. Then the third company, actually, that we have are operating somewhere in total local government. You know, they are into marble. And uh, we are trying again to see that. It, it takes me back to my first point I mentioned to you about getting the raw materials. Most of these companies mine the raw material and they take them out to go and process outside Nigeria and then bring the finished product back to Nigeria. So we are talking to these big companies and we are encouraging them that please, in addition to the mining, we want to process them here. You know, so that from the beginning to the end, you mine, you wash, you process, and we just sell the finished product. Have, uh, have you started with anyone in that form? The one that is trying to raise money right now mm. from the banks, which we are encouraging you know, them to do that, and we are supporting them, and we are serving as some kind of references for them, you know, that's one of the things we are trying to encourage. The one in, uh, for the marble, that is a little bit easier to process, that doesn't require too much investment. Mm. You know, we are even going to the extent of looking for partners for them, to see if the partners can come, join them, so that they can just mine, give them the raw, and then they can process. So, but that's why I'm telling you, a lot of these things are not things that you can begin today and be able to achieve tomorrow, you know. So just getting the partner alone sometimes can take you one to two years. Wow. You know, getting a partner alone. So businesses take time to build. Okay, you know, but what kind of uh, contract or agreement? Um, because it's very key. Because most of the time, maybe after your regime, somebody comes, like we say, and decides he's not doing it again, and we go back to square one. What kind of um, structure? Structure are you uh, putting in place to make sure there's continuity, even? When you are not there, because most of the things you've said, I mean, yeah, natural state will just become the next London in Nigeria. No, it will become the next London immediately. But what we are saying is, uh, the first structure that I am putting in is from my experience. We don't want government to be involved in any financial thing in the company, in the management of the organization. Mm. So, because the moment you do that, then government would like to be the managing director, the financial director, the directors, this. Then you, you begin to have problems, yeah, okay, in it. Does. So we say what we should do as a government will provide with you the, all the support, the atmosphere that you will be able to operate. Hopefully, by the time we are living, you are well grounded, you are well established. Mm. Nobody can move you from there. And government will continue to get its revenue, you know, which is fine. But where now government will say, oh, I have interest in there. Give me back my interest, you know, and then that will be the beginning for the company to collapse. You understand? Mm. Or government will say, no, you must employ so-so and so as the managing director. Mm. And the person doesn't have the interest of the company. 
that's the beginning for the company to. So what we are trying to do is to make sure that government's participation is not in the day-to-day -day operations of the of the company. You know, so that's part of the structure we are putting in. That's but we are good. yeah, but we are tying them down to where they say what is meant for government, this royalty, this percentage has to be paid, this is the time, has to be paid. You know, so we well, those are the kinds of things we want to tie down. This, I'm sure, has indirectly touched my question because I know with this kind of arrangement, issues of uh, unemployment would drastically reduce in Nasarawa State because if the companies are, are, are producing and the final, the process of the final product and everything is done here, it that would indirectly create employment. Uh, because I was going to ask, uh, you know, the, the population of the Nigerian youths now are so much, you know, and uh, I was going to ask what, uh, what kind of attention have you be, be, been giving to the youths of Nasara State you see, uh, the, differently? You the, see, the, the common attention governments in the state give to youth and women we hide it under the word empowerment. Okay? Mm -hmm. You find groups of youth, you give them 50, 50,000 naira, you ask them go and run a business. <laughs> you know, and then after a while the business collapses because they don't have enough capital. Some of them go and get married with the money, some of them go and do other things, anyway, nothing goes. Mm -hmm. So, now going back to what you said, what we are trying to do really is not just to even provide employment for the people, to provide them with the knowledge. You know, in fact, my dream, by the grace of God, is that by the time we engage the people, our youth in Nasrallah State, train them in these organizations, you know, employ them first, train them, and now they become more knowledgeable, more experienced, then to hear that another state somewhere is looking for so-so and so number. You say, go to Nasrallah State, you can find them. And then you go and take 100, youth from Nasrallah State and you employ them. To me, that's it. Once you do that, my, my dream is already fulfilled. That's the dream I have. And why am I telling you, is that possible or not? We say we are going to go and do some welding work right now. Yeah. Let me tell you, in 2018, 2017, 2018, this, this uh, refinery that Dangote is building in Lagos, mm. you know how many welders they were looking for? 4,000 welders. You know, we didn't find them in Nigeria. They had to go and bring them from outside. India. China. Mm, I saw a lot of them there. Exactly. A lot. Exactly. I was even asking questions, what happens to unemployment? No, they couldn't find certified ones here. I actually asked that question because there yeah. were so many. No, 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 you couldn't find certified ones here, so you have to go and find certified ones. You know, so that's what happened. So when you train the people here and they are well trained, you know, you know, even this, uh, uh, all these technicians that you are seeing, or this, by the time you are engaging them in a factory such as the refinery, you are going to install a vessel. You are going to talk about 1,500 PSI. You, are you can't play around with people's life and take some uh, uncertified roadside welder and ask him to go and do that. Because you, the contractor, will be in trouble. Hmm. You know, you have to get people who are certified. So getting the certified ones was a problem. They had to go and 4,000 of them. That's a lot. So that's what I'm telling you, you know, is a, there are great opportunities, you know, so it is not all about politics. Okay, so there are opportunities out with, there. with that kind of arrangement, uh, with time they would be saying if you want those kind of people come to Nasara State mm? because what, you would have empowered your people. What do you think made America what it is? A lot of us Nigerians, let me take, take myself out, out of engineering and, te and technical. Nurses. Houston, Texas has the biggest medical center in the U.S. Go to that medical center. Then talk. St. Luke's. Haman. This, who do you see? Nigerians. Hmm. Nigerian doctors, nurses, 
midwives. This is Nigeria. <laughs> Lab technicians. Bunch of Nigerians that you see there. So they brought them up there. Trained them. That's what it is. That's how knowledge actually gets away. And that's how you lose the, the people. So even America looks forward to bringing some of these uh, knowledgeable people in that, in that area. So majority of them is, is that. And okay, I, I just ask, uh, because you are an engineer, another thing that bothers me, it's not in my questions, is the issue of a Jakuta steel industry. We've had different, you know, every government comes in and tries. What really is the problem? Why can't we get that steel industry to work? Me and you can discuss a Jakuta because that's my, that's again my field, that's my training from the beginning. Yeah, that's why I'm dropping it, sir. If I take a Jakuta now, we can discuss a Jakuta for another 10 hours. <laughs> but let me tell you in a nutshell, you know, I started actually, I had my, my I started as, as a welder in technical school, Buku. From there, I went to uh, do my degree in mechanical technology with expertise in material science, okay, and metallurgy. At the time I was doing that, my focus was the steel development in Nigeria, and that's why on my return, I worked for Josie Rolling Company. Hmm. Okay, so before I went into oil and gas, I was actually still uh, this, and that's my background. Hmm. So, in this field, you say steel making, there are various processes of producing steel. The Russians are very good at the old methods. One of the oldest methods of producing steel is called the blast furnace method. In a blast furnace, you take coke, which you get from coal. You take the iron ore. You blend. It's actually very physical, very mechanical way of producing steel. Mm. And it requires further process. So you produce the, the ingots, you call them, first, in the blast furnace. Then you have a secondary process. So in Ajakuta, the secondary process is called the open heart process. Okay, so you, you have the blast furnace and you have this. So they are very physical method. Is the, is the old method of the, the Russians, which I have zero, nothing against. I don't have any problem with. I think it's okay. Nigerians, we are very strong people, you know, just like the Russians, and we can do that. Yes. Then with this dependence of, on this thing, we're allowed to be confused. I was told I wasn't there. The Americans came and said, this is blast furnace is an old method. And it is. Nobody can question that. It's one of the oldest methods of producing steel. Mm. It says outdated. <laughs> they are still using it in Russia. You understand? So, for that reason, why don't you begin to think about some of the new processes? Like the DRI, direct reduced iron process, which is similar to what happened now in Alaja, Delta. Delta is built by the Japanese to, to, to use the DRI process. You know, so since we already have the DRI in a small plant in Delta compared with the Jakuta, hmm. we'll have just continued our Jakuta. Hmm. You know, but our leaders being allowed to be confused by this one is, is uh, no, no good anymore. This one is all motored. And then the, mil the military, of course, came in, took over from the Shagari administration mm. that started it and said, okay, we don't agree with it. We agree more with these people. We don't, you know, that's what confused that. And that's the beginning of all the problems that we are having. You know, so that's my understanding mm. of it. That's why I'm telling you. I can take each one of them and discuss, and we can take two hours talking about uh, okay that uh, collection dispute collection of VAT falls within the powers of state what's your take on that who says that I think I think I think <laughs> I think it's a controversial point you know uh, somebody says this let me just give you the position of the northern governors the position of the northern governors is that 
We are waiting to see the outcome of the Supreme Court judgment. You have done very well in a short while as the governor of Nasara State. Um, generally, with all these plans, um, if given the opportunity to, to serve the state for eight years, what is your vision for Nasara State? Where would you like to see uh, Nasara State in your eight years? Okay. All our vision are stated clearly in a document called NET, Nasarawa Economic Development Strategy, which we incorporated an economic advisory council chaired by a well-renowned lawyer called Konya Jai, economic lawyer. Now, in a nutshell, what that is all about is taking the state from where it is at this moment to so, so, and so, so. And we have followed in every area, every, every category, in education. You know, in education, Nasarawa is almost number 30 in the list, okay? We said, no, this is not acceptable. What are we going to do? We have to go and develop a strategy for our primary school, promote education from primary school, come to areas of needs. We are lacking in science education, promote scientists at the secondary level. So we renovate certain schools, identify schools as science schools promote our children to be scientists so they can mature into different areas, doctors, uh, engineers, and the rest of that, which we are lacking in Nasarawa. So that is education. In agriculture, we say while we are promoting uh, small-scale agriculture, our focus is on the big companies, and that's how we have been able to, to get companies like the Azman Rice, promote the Dangote that is there. Flour mills, that is there. In fact, flour mills next week is coming in for their groundbreaking in Toto to begin. So in agriculture, in health, you know, we are going to have also, you know, so we pick each one of these areas, okay, and we say in this area, that's what we want to do. In this area, this is what we want to do. And we say within a certain period of time, we don't want to be number this in the list of the data. We want to be number this. Similar to what we did when I was in the Committee for Vision 2020. What that, a lot of people just say 20, 20, Vision 2020, they don't even know the meaning. You know, what we said then in 2011, sorry, in 2009 really, that's when we started. Mm. The, the whole essence of Vision 2020 20 was by the year 2020, we were trying to make sure Nigeria becomes number 20 most best economic country in the world. So that's where the 2020 20 comes about. And that's where the vision is for me in Nasarawa State. So I say, Nasarawa State, I want to take the state from the level where it is, which is very shameful at the moment, in IGR, in VAT collection, in education, in healthcare, in agriculture. So each one, we take it this, and then overall, in our physical responsibility, we want to be here. So that's the idea. Okay, we have been talking to the executive governor of uh, Nasarawa State. Right now, we want to take him to one of these construction companies as an engineer to go and uh, do some welding work. And uh, uh, let's see whether he can still remember his skills of welding. True Nigerians, heroes of our time, if we're ready, let's go there. As you can see, we have the executive governor of uh, Nasarawa State, uh, who has done so well uh, given the recent budgetary reports. Nasarawa State, which was rated 28, now is number 16. Congratulations, Your Excellency. I know we are still, we are still climbing higher. Yes, a round of applause. Man, it's not easy. Yes, yes, yes. We have some uniforms for you there, from safety uniforms as usual. It's like you already know how to handle everything, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 
bubbles. Okay. He doesn't believe I know how to well I can cast. Where do you want me to cut it at? At what point do you want me to cut? Why do you need the iron rod for? Is it not electrode? Yes, sir. So why do you need the iron rod? Filler rod, sir. Okay, we have seen the executive governor of Nasarawa State perform uh, his tax on true Nigerians and uh, the score, as you can see, we've been having a lot of round of applause for him. It means he has done very well. He has not forgotten uh, his humble beginnings. He's been true Nigerians, heroes of our time, and uh, he has performed his tax very well, and together we'd like to say long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you.